the Prince's Palace, luxury yachts, the Formula One Grand Prix, and the Monte Carlo Casino. These are some of the emblems of Monaco. But the rock is far from being limited to these picture postcard decorations. Art is strongly represented there. Fine foodies always find happiness there. And as for lovers and collectors of timepieces, this is where, to their delight, some of the most sought-after models on the planet appear. We'll explain why in a moment. But for now, we head to the Fairmont Monte Carlo Hotel. It's here, at the foot of one of the Principality's most emblematic hotels, that Gianluca Gaudio has chosen to exhibit his works of art. Within this Bel Air Fine Art Gallery, there are photographers, sculptors, and a large selection of contemporary painters with international or emerging influence from different artistic movements. From abstract paintings by Cedric Boutillé to optical art by British artist Patrick Hughes. Not forgetting the figurative paintings of Marco Grassi. Nor the acrylic and paper paintings by Chinese artist Hong Yo Zhuang and many other masterpieces as well. Today, Bel Air Fine Art is a recognized international group with 18 galleries around the world. And the artists that you find in the mind of our group are Italian, French, European or American artists. The line is a bit pop, street, but it's really the expression of today's art. When we talk about contemporary art, we have to talk about art that's able to communicate something that represents our time. The kinetic art of Patrick Rubinstein is a perfect example, as are the works of Aero or Chloe B. While Jeff Koons no longer needs to be introduced, Eddie Maniez is gradually starting to make his mark in the art world with his creations dressed in silicone nubs. As for Antoine Dufilo, he offers us a new vision of the automobile. Incredibly realistic, almost human, these sculptures by Carol Feuermann totally amazed us. Today, she's the most important American artist. She's exhibiting her pieces at the National Museum in Rome, and it's like a consecration. The French artist Pepon instead chose to take us back to childhood with his emblematic Tintin. In fact, he's known for the Tintins, but also the Hulk and Spider-Man. He's known for all these characters, but the Tintins are the piece with which he made himself known on the market. It's resin covered with laid paper, and each Tintin tells us a story. Here, there's a double interpretation possible for these works by Joel Moens de Haza. It all depends on how far away you're standing. As you get closer, it's quite possible that you'll blush. He's the king of the photo mosaic. He only uses mini bikinis to show a subject, which afterwards is totally different. And there's a photo without a bikini, but we haven't found it yet. Indeed, you might as well look for a needle in a haystack. What's easier to find, however, is the new Casino Square. Freshly renovated, it's totally changed its look. Exit the famous Camembert, as the locals affectionately called it. The dome on the grass, which took up much of the space, has given way to an elegant esplanade of beige tiles. Pedestrianized and clad in palm trees, this new square marks an additional stage in the architectural renovation project of the buildings and spaces of the Société des Bains de Mer, such as the Hotel de Paris or the One Monte Carlo complex, according to the Prince's Palace. Another emblematic place of the Principality is the Yacht Club, founded in 1953 by Prince Rainier and chaired since 1984 by Sovereign Prince Albert II. The Yacht Club of Monaco brings together 2,500 members, divided into 73 nationalities. This high-tech building, anchored on the Louis II Quay, houses the Principality's two historic nautical clubs, the Société Nautique, dedicated to rowing, and the Yacht Club, a meeting point for ship owners and all activities related to international yachting. 
The Wine Palace is located at the foot of this ship-like structure. It's a privileged meeting place for all lovers of wines, champagnes and spirits, with its some 1,200 references that are mostly French and Italian. This is where Philippe Meillard wanted to meet us with the idea of having us taste his champagne. A lover of fine bubbles and great wines, it was in 2018 that he embarked on the acquisition of the Comte de Monte Carlo brand, created by Baron Christian de Massy in the early 2000s. Today, the brand is booming, even offering itself the luxury of a partnership with one of the most prestigious events on the planet, the Monaco Yacht Show, during which four variations of the champagne were tasted. The four champagnes that we have are the Riviera, which is a brut champagne. We have the saint de Vaud, which is a Blanc de Blanc. We have the Carré d'Or, which is a low-pressure champagne, that is to say that the fermentation takes place below three bars, which gives extremely delicate bubbles. And fourth, we have a vintage champagne called Noblesse Oblige. A final vintage resulting from a subtle blend of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay from 2010. A complex and gourmet champagne with notes of truffles and walnut oil on the palate. And since Monte Carlo remains the quintessence of luxury, elegance and glamour for the whole world, why on earth limit yourself to one brand of champagne? The Baron de Monte Carlo label therefore adorns the white and red wines of Philippe Meillard. And that's not all. In 2018, when we acquired the brand portfolios owned by Mr. Christian de Massy, the son of Princess Antoinette and cousin of our revered sovereign, we actually had the opportunity to purchase 34 brands, 33 of which use the name Monaco and Monte Carlo. For example, we have Monte Carlo Creative Engineering. Perhaps there are people who consider that the brand can be interesting for creating high tech. We took a brand called Monte Carlo Gourmet, with which we decided to create some prestigious products. We started with a number of liqueurs, which are liqueurs that recreate desserts. And so we have an opportunity to involve a number of investors and to launch products. If there are people who are interested in some of our brands and partnerships, we're very open to talk. The doors are open. Investors take note. Another sector where it's good to invest lately is watchmaking. Located a stone's throw from the Hermitage Hotel, the Good Time Monaco Boutique invites us to learn more about a booming market, that of second-hand luxury watches. Daytona, Pepsi, Royal Oak, Nautilus, so many almost impossible to find models that prove that there's a real shortage in the market for iconic watches, with the direct consequence of soaring prices. A used model can now sell for twice as much as a boutique model. It's the price to pay to avoid being on a long waiting list. It's a market that's booming, very dynamic, very interesting also, because it's very difficult to get a watch at a luxury retailer, whereas here we can get them instantly. To fill out the window displays, it all starts with a seduction operation by the sellers. Founded in 2021, the company has no other choice at the moment than to play the generosity card. We're very young, so to stand out a bit and build a clientele, we're able to pay a little more than the others. I'm not saying that we're going to overpay your watch, but we're going to pay a little more than the competitors to be able to satisfy you. In the same way, if you come to buy your watch from us, we're able to sell it on the market to be able to retain you as a customer. So suddenly, the customer wins whether he's a seller or a buyer and we are also winners. And while local customers can come directly to the store, to the Scala Palace, remote transactions, purchases or sales remain entirely possible and completely secure. If you buy a watch remotely, it's totally safe. All of our watches are shipped by carrier, insured, 
and we can ship worldwide. There's no problem. With the added bonus for each timepiece, an official guarantee of the brand. You can find the complete list of watches still available on Good Time Monaco's Instagram and Facebook accounts. After this busy day, the time has come to go out for dinner in one of the Principality's most famous restaurants. I return to our hotel, the Fairmont Monte Carlo, for a gourmet moment at Nobu. Nobuyuki Matsuisa, his full name, is a great chef who is particularly appreciated for his Japanese cuisine with Peruvian accents. We take a quick tour in the company of chef Jérôme Lovelec, who, at Nobu, where he's worked for almost 18 years, likes to create all his dishes from the heart, the kokoro. While the traditional yakimono, yakitori, or tempura are on the menu, black cod, Nobu's signature dish, remains the best seller the essential dish. It's cod that we marinate for 72 hours in a miso-based preparation and then caramelized under the salamander broiler. And it's the best-selling dish in the world. This is a cod that comes from Alaska, specifically for this recipe. When you taste it, it tastes sweet and savory. It's very sweet. The sweetness of the fish that comes out and the leaves of the fish that flake easily so you can eat it with chopsticks, it's wonderful. It melts. It's a candy. I call it candy. Of course, in such a Japanese-style decor, embellished with an incredible view of the sea, it's also all about the sushi. At the helm, this man, Wagner Spadasio, Vice World Champion 2018. Green tea, ginger, wasabi, there are so many products that can also be found behind the bar. Andrea was inspired by the place to offer new taste experiences with undeniable success. It's on this little gourmet note that we'll leave Monaco, ready to come back soon for new discoveries.